already causing trouble. Come on, you little booger. She thinks I have scrambled eggs. Mm-hmm. They love scram scrambled eggs. <laughs> You're crazy. skydive yeah they're a lot uh, more active and curious and crazy than chickens but they are cool look how cute he is to swim and there's nowhere to go. Can I come up here? I think they're actually bathing. They're like cleaning themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's taking a full on bath. Here you get behind your ears. <laughs> you guys all done? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How to dry your duck. Me first. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
not working. First, convince them that they need to get out of the water. Yeah, stay up here. Yeah. No, no! <laughs> Him. He's trying to escape. He wants to go back in the water. You gotta get the water out first. I won't go up. I wanna live in there. No, don't do it. Don't high dive. No. <laughs> this is not working. Come on. I need to dry you. <laughs> I need to dry you off. They're ducks. Stay here. <laughs> I'm going to need assistance. <laughs> come on, you. Do you want to come out? <laughs> I don't want to come out. I so want to mohawk his hair. End with the fabulous mohawk. <laughs> it's like Billy Idol. Come on, wanna come out? Yeah, is it time? So today we moved the ducklings in with the baby chicks. And this is their first time in here. Here are the ducklings and the goose, and they're in a separate cage. And we're monitoring them. Right there's our monitor with the purple shoes. And the big ching chickens are not really liking this. They're all having a chicken meeting about it. They're not really digging the newcomers. And these guys. They're just all over here chill and pretty much taking a nap because they don't really care. So, assuming they continue to just not care, we'll leave them in, these, in here for a couple hours, we'll watch them, and we might open the gate and then see how they integrate with each other. So right now, at least for the next couple hours, we're going to keep them in this cage and just see how they do. And keep an eye on them. And these guys really are happy to be outside. What do you think? All right, so we are going to open the door and see how the chickens, the big chickens and the little chickens and the ducks all mesh together. But first, we're going to turn this fence on. So hopefully, the chickens learn what the fence is all about. And Ilaria is going to release the chickens. All right, go ahead. Watch that string in front of the door. Oh, Maple's a little curious. Here comes Ed. Oh. I don't think Truffle knows what to make of Ed. All the big chickens are going in to their old coop. <laughs> well, I think there's a little tip there. Come on, Dad. So far, it's pretty uh, anticlimactic. Whoop. Yeah. I think Mushroom is afraid of the ducks. They're only about two and a half weeks old at this point. 
And it seems like Ed rules everybody. These guys need to figure out what the fence is all about. So, all the big birds ran into the coop, because that used to be their home, so they're all checking it out and eating the food in there. The ducks are over here all by themselves in a pile of peas. And these guys, I don't know what these guys are doing, but they look like they're about ready to get zapped. Oh, I'm Zed. It's awfully close. Oh, someone just got zapped. Yep, fence is charged. Don't go near the fence. These dorkings ended up being so sweet. They're really lovable. That little Welsomer just kind of hangs out by himself. Herself. They're just kind of free roaming. And you can see Elvis, that's the male, with the white breast. And that's a girl, and Laurie's holding the other girl. <laughs> I'm waiting for Ed or the babies to get zapped. Uh oh. Uh oh. There we go. One of the ducklings just got zapped. It's really important that they do understand the fence um, and that it's, it's fully charged and that they understand that, that that's the boundary. Otherwise, they could very easily squeeze through those holes and we don't want that to happen. The big chickens are eating the baby food. The babies are eating the big chicken food. Ed and the ducks are eating grass. <laughs> what was that? Well, everyone for the most part is getting along. A little bit of pecking going on. So let me introduce you to the newest members of Gilbrook Farm. We have Quackers, Cheese, who are two Khaki Campbell ducks. And then we have Ed with the fabulous hair. Uh, also known as King Edward with a fabulous hair. Um, and Ed is a uh, tufted Roman goose. Now, the reason we went with Packet Campbell ducks, uh, one is male and one is female, is because we really, really like duck eggs. And with having a male and a female, we're able to breed them and uh, hopefully have more ducks and uh, more eggs. And we might be able to even sell the ducks as well. And I'm getting the evil look like, what? What do you plan on doing with me? <laughs> What? What do you plan on doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why we have have these guys. We went with the khaki Campbells over other ducks because they're really good layers. And right now, we don't uh, really want to lay. We don't want to raise ducks for meat. Uh, we're really interested in the eggs, so that's why we went with the khaki Campbells because they're really, really high quantity layers. Now, as far as Ed, Ed's a tufted Roman goose, and. To be perfectly honest, uh, I did not want to get a goose. I don't like geese. Uh, I think they're loud and they can be very, very mean. And uh, I had no desire to get a goose. It wasn't actually until I watched a video um, by Art and Bree, and I'll link to, to their channel above, but they have uh, a tufted Roman named um, Donald on their channel. Now, they did a video on Donald uh, kind of explaining how he sort of is like the guardian of, of all the chickens. Um, and they had some trouble with him as far as he can be really mean, but he also can be very protective. I looked into tufted Roman geese uh, when I saw that because that was a breed that I hadn't heard of before. And it turns out that they are the most gentle of the geese breeds. Um, so I wanted to give it a try. In particular because uh, right now you can see that we run these um, mason lines above 
our run. And this is to protect our chickens from hawks. Now we're very, very quickly going to be um, outgrowing this fenced in area. And at some point we're going to want to free range a little bit more or put them in a larger area such as in, in with the goats. And we're not going to be able to string mason line above something like that. So we need some sort of protector uh, of the chickens to help protect against hawks because we have a lot of red-tailed hawks that fly over here, that nest over here. And so the reason that we wanted a goose was for some sort of hawk protection. Uh, now they don't actually fight off hawks, but they do make a whole lot of noise like that, except in the adult version. Hmm. They do make a whole lot of noise and uh, they tend to scare off hawks. So we figured we'd give them a try and see how he does. We do know that there's a risk of him being mean to the chickens. Um, I've read a lot of stories where they've had some really mean geese that would hold chickens' heads underwater and drown them or would pick them up and slam them down by their necks. Um, and so, you know, they can, and then I've, you know, read a whole bunch of other case studies where they, people have raised chickens and ducks and geese side by side and, and they work perfectly well. So we figured it's a case by case basis and so we were willing to give it a try. And so here we are with Ed with the fabulous hair and quackers and cheese. So a quick little story about Ed. Um, Ed is about two and a half weeks old, so are the ducks. And uh, probably about a week after we got him, we noticed that uh, Ed was laying down a lot. Um, he was just laying next to his water bowl and drinking. Uh, just, he seemed really weak. And so after doing some research, um, I thought it might be a niacin deficiency. Now, uh, there are a lot of people that say that you can raise ducks and geese on chick starter, non, has to be non-medicated chick starter, and you must supplement with niacin. Niacin can be found in either brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast. Now, I was using nutritional yeast to supplement for the niacin, and I was putting it in their feed every third day. The reason that I was doing it every third day is because nutritional yeast has a much, much higher level of niacin than brewer's yeast. It's really high, so I didn't want to overdose them. But after seeing that Ed was pretty weak, um, I was a little concerned I might not be dosing him correctly. So I upped the dose. I also added some B12 to his water. And I started giving some cod liver oil. All these things were things that I read that it, people tended to do whenever they had a goose or ducks with uh, weak legs. Um, I noticed a slight improvement in Ed. And then um, I would say probably a day or two later, uh, he just completely collapsed. His, his neck was weak, his wings were saggy, it wasn't just his legs. And um, I got the impression that it wasn't a niacin deficiency at that point, but that it was probably a virus. And uh, so again, I'm online trying to do a whole bunch of research and figure out what was wrong with Ed and what I could do myself. And uh, I read a whole bunch of case studies on that and anybody that brought him to the vet basically just splinted the legs together and gave him antibiotics and that worked I would say maybe 5% of the time. A lot of the time the geese just ended up dying. Uh, what we ended up doing was we splinted Ed's legs together above the hocks, so uh, right above this, this joint here. We splinted his legs together with vet tape um, and then his legs started curling under and we used uh, painter's tape actually and uh, spread his, his little foot out like this to make sure he had flat footing. And we did that for about three days. And for about the first day, he face planted pretty much constantly. We tried to help him get to the water and the food. He was still eating and drinking. Um, I was still supplementing uh, with cod liver oil. I was putting it in his food. I was putting B12 in his water. Uh, and then I switched over to a waterfowl feed just to make sure that I wasn't doing anything wrong with the niacin. And uh, after about three days, um, the tape fell off of his foot and I believe it was the morning of day four that the tape fell off or he picked it off of his legs and he was work walking perfectly fine. So uh, I'm not sure if that's what did it, the cod liver oil, the, the B12 in the water and the correct feed, um, but he's doing really fine right now. So we moved him outdoors with, the, um, with our baby chicks who are about, what are they, about six weeks old and uh, he's been terrorizing them ever since. He's very, very much bonded to the ducks and uh, he is very, very protective of the ducks. Uh, and he sticks out his neck and goes after the poor chickens, the poor baby chickens, and grabs their tail feathers. And, but the reason that I stuck him out here so early, he's not feathered out yet, but it's really, really warm days. 
The reason I stuck him out here so early with the chickens is because I want him to get bonded to the chickens. I don't want him to be um, constantly uh, just protecting the ducks. So my goal here is to try and bond them with the duck with the chickens as quickly as possible so that he doesn't end up being a mean goose. Um, time will tell on that one. If he ends up being mean, well, we'll end up having to sell him or, or something. But right now he's really, really sweet. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's just only doing it with the ducks and he's not doing it with the rest of the chickens. So you can see he's also bonded us. He's very sweet. He's just not so sweet to the chickens. Even the big chickens are scared of him. Like they run away from him. He just has to put out his neck and the big chickens run away. But he's a very sweet goose to us. I'll put him down with his family. Whoop, there you go. So these are a little dorkings. They're, what are they, about six, five and a half, six weeks old, something like that. Um, they've been out here. Actually, they might be a little bit older than that. Um, they've been out here and uh, locked up in this run separate from the big chickens. We haven't opened the door. Today is the first day that they are integrating with the bigger chickens. For the last three days, we put the ducks in there with them. And like I said, Ed's kind of, Ed was kind of terrorizing them a little bit. They kind of stayed their separate ways. We had the ducks on one end and the chickens on the other, and then they would swap. Um, they just basically avoided one another. And um, today we decided let's kind of get them merged out here with the other chickens and see what happened. We uh, made sure that the fence was fully charged because we want them to get accustomed to that fence having a bite to it. And we had everybody in here uh, to make sure that there was no escapees and nobody was getting significantly hurt. Um, there, we know there's going to be some pecking uh, on the head, um, so establishing of the pecking order with, with the different birds, and that did happen. But so far, nobody has gotten significantly hurt or anything like that, just a little bit of pecking. And basically, everybody has been avoiding the ducks and Ed. Nobody goes near them. You can see in the background, they're working on establishing their pecking order. A little bit at a time. We're just letting them out for a couple hours and just seeing how it goes. So our setup in here, uh, this is uh, gonna be our grow out pen for our birds. Uh, we have the baby chicks in here now, we have the ducks and Ed. When we introduced uh, Ed and the, um, and the ducks in here, Ed immediately chased the baby birds away from the food. So we ended up putting a separate food dish in here. It's my Pyrex cooking ware because I didn't have enough <laughs> rubber bowls. Um, as you can see, they're super messy. We just literally cleaned that out. And we have a separate bowls over here. So th And they're on opposite sides so that if Ed chases the chickens away from the food, at least they can go to this other side and, and still eat. The feed that we're using in here is the waterfowl feed. We're going to continue using the waterfowl feed, which is a high protein feed until the end of week three, which is coming up here uh, in the next couple of days. After that, we'll switch them over to a lower percentage um, because uh, ducks and geese do not need to be on a high percentage food past three weeks and then everybody will be on the same feed. I'm not too concerned about the babies eating a higher percentage of protein right now. Um, just want to make sure that Ed and the two ducks are getting what they need because they're the youngest. And then when we switch over to the lower percentage of chicken feed, I'll just supplement again with the nutritional yeast. At nighttime, um, the ducks and uh, Ed have a little bit of trouble getting up into the, um, the nest box, I am keeping the babies together, uh, the chickens and the ducks together. So I will just, the chickens will go up themselves, but with Ed and the, and the ducks, I'll just put, pick them up and put them in there and they'll just nest on the floor and all the chickens will go up in the roost. And uh, we just close them up for the night. We also found that the ducks like to swim in the water bowls, so we've ended up putting this little container of water in here. There is a brick inside and a little walkway so that they don't get trapped in here, but the ducks will go in and swim, the chickens will go and stand on this little uh, brick here and peck at the water. And uh, so everyone seems to kind of be happy with this setup so far. That's about it guys, just a quick little update on our ducks and our goose. Quackers, cheese, and Ed with the fabulous hair. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's still getting settled in, everyone's getting used to each other. Um, we're by no means experts on waterfowl or on chickens, but this is what we're doing so far. It seems to be working for us. 
Uh, we'll keep you posted. If anything's not working, we'll let you know. See you in the next video. Pooping up the water. I think they are.